Moses, so he did. That's why we celebrate. That's why we observe this most holy day. I want to show you just a couple of places. Cause this is, I hope you, you're relaxed. I hope you, uh, you've come with, with time on your hands because it's, this is not something that we take lightly and we don't rush through this, this, this time. We're going to take the time to pray. We're going to take the time to uh, petition the Lord our God. Here's one of the places where this book, the, the opening of the book is uh, mentioned because on this day that the book of life is opened, the Lord will write in your name in his book of life, and you want your name to be written in that book of life. And so it says here in Daniel 12, now at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands guard over the sons of, of, his, of your people will arise, and there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until now, until that time. And at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book. So everyone whose name is written in the book, Daniel knew about this. This is something that Hebrews understand and know that this solemn time is a time where we need to get right. We need to come clean before the Lord. It says that they will be rescued. And we have confidence that the Lord will do that. In Revelation 3, 5, it says, the one who overcomes will be clothed the same way in white garments. It's a custom, can I say a tradition, that on Yom Teruah, Yom Kippur, that you wear white garments. And this is one of the references. It says, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So I'm just giving you a couple of references to this holy and solemn day. So the idea of humbling your soul, to afflict your soul, it also means self-abasement, chasing self, deal heartily with, to force, ravish, and to weaken. And this is why um, the Hebrews will many times be fasting on this day. Is that me? Yes. I can use a handheld. If it's distracting. <clears throat> that are used with um, the idea of humbling your soul. Yes? You going to do that? Oh, it's me. So, Steve, you already touched on this. The book of Jonah is often, Yonah, is often read on Yom Kippur. And I, would, I just wanted to highlight this one area because think about this. Jonah, Yonah did not want to go and speak to the people of, of, of Nineveh. He knew that God is a merciful God, and he did not want God to forgive them and, and pardon their sin. And so he, he went another direction, and the Lord had to get his attention. Anyway, the long story short, he was thrown out of a boat, and is my grandson? Yeah, my grandson is in here. The Hebrew understanding of Jonah being thrown from the, the boat, he did not stay alive inside this great fish. You don't live in a great fish for three days under the water and live. Um, the idea, the, the, the Hebrew understanding is that Jonah died, but the Lord caused a great fish to, to swallow him so that his body would not see decay. And this is in reference to the Messiah who would be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, yet his body would not see decay. So think about this. The people of Nineveh, they also, one of the gods that they worshiped was, was Dagon, who was the fish god. Now imagine... If a great fish vomits up some prophet, and this prophet gets out of a fish and starts saying, the Lord is going to bring judgment on Nineveh, I think you, he'd have your, your attention. 
And the news of this, this dread came to the ears of the, uh, of, the, of the king of Nineveh. And it says, the people of Nineveh believed in God. Now, these were not godly people. This was a horrible civilization. It says, then the people of Nineveh believed in God, and they called a fast and put on sackcloth. From the greatest to the least of them, when the word reached the king of Nineveh, he got up on his throne, removed his robe from himself, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat on the dust. And he issued a proclamation, and it said, In Nineveh, by the decree of the king and by his nobles, no person, listen to this, no person, animal, herd, or flock is to taste anything. So not only did the people of Nineveh fast, even, they made their animals fast. They were serious about getting right with God. They are not to eat or drink water. But every person and animal must be covered with sackcloth. <laughs> every person and animal must be covered with... These people were serious about getting right with God. And they are to call on God vehemently. And they are to turn each one from the evil way and from the violence which is in their hands. Who knows? And this is the key in this passage. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his burning anger so that we will not perish. This was their intent of their heart. Their, their intent was perhaps if we are sincere with this repentance, God would hear and, and turn from his fierce anger. And the scripture says, when God saw their deeds, that they turned from their evil way, then God relented of the disaster which he had declared he would bring on them. So he did not do it. If, if God would forgive Nineveh, could he, would he not forgive us our sins? Let me, let me just also add this as I get into this. Um, I, I, I showed you guys this last year, I'm pretty sure. When we... When we're asking for forgiveness of prayer, in prayer, um, we're not actually asking God to forgive us of past prayers, past sins. We're not asking for that. We're actually looking to the new year. We're looking for God to forgive us of sins we're going to commit in this next year, between now and next Yom Kippur. Okay? Okay. So these prayers are going out before us. We're going to pray a blessing. We're going to pray uh, peace, healing in this year coming forward. And then we're going to catch up to those prayers. Does that make sense? Let me, I, I like to use an example. Women know about this. When you go to a department store and you want to try perfume, don't you, don't you spray it, right? And then you go, right? You walk into it. It's the same idea. It's the same exact idea. We're going to pray these blessings in this next year, for this next year, and then we're going to walk into it. We're going to catch up to these prayers, the manifestation of these prayers. So this is, Hapikorim is, um, called Hapikorim is atonement. It's, it's not just one atonement. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the high priest was going to pray for himself, his family, the people, you know, the, the, the priests, the, the holy place, the altar. He's praying for all of these atonements, making atonement for all of these, these factors. So this is called Nidre. This is taken from the synagogue. And I'm going to, y'all can stay seated for right now. But we're all going to, um, I have a number of, you got to fix, you think? Uh -huh. Hey, I'm back. All right. No drummer? I like the drums. All right, so we're going to recite these prayers together. And the reason why, um, it's pretty extensive, the things that we're going to be confessing to the Lord. 
And this is just an aid to help us as we go through. If we need to pause, and we will, we will pause, selah, and take a time to really understand the magnitude of our prayers and the extent of our prayers. So together, all vows, you got to say it with me, together, ah, together, all vows, bonds, promises, obligations, and oaths between ourselves and Adonai, which we have sworn and taken upon ourselves from last Yom HaKopikrim to this Day of Atonement, may Adonai work them together for good as we repent of having made them. I'm going to give you a few minutes to look at that because sometimes we read and we're not really understanding the words that we're saying. So all vows, bonds, promises, obligations, and oaths that we have said between now and, well, the last ha kippurim to this day of atonement. This is what we're encompassing here. Together, Yeshua said to us, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of Elohim, nor by the east, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, as it is the city of the great king. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no. For whatever is more than that, these, is from the evil one. And that's found in Matthew 5. All together, the king sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. But you got to really say this with proclamation. The king sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. I'm giving you a moment to pause. The understanding of this is may your name be worshipped. Together, may your name be worshipped forever, our King. Unto you we offer blessings and thanksgivings from this time and forever. Blessed are you, yod vav our Elohim, King exalted through praises. Elohim of thanksgivings, Adonai of wonders, who chooses musical songs of praise, King, Elohim, giver of life to the world. Adonai, Melech, the Lord is King. You hold the universe together. The Lord is king. You establish heaven and earth. The Lord is king. You created man in your image. The Lord is king. The seraphim and all the heavens declare the Lord is king. The Psalms sing out that the Lord is king. Your people declare in never-ending worship the Lord is king. Prayers arise continually because the Lord is king. May all your works declare the Lord is king. Oh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The Lord is king. As I said before, I'm not going to rush through these prayers. I don't want to make this just rote. I want us to really take this time to, to get before the king and, and whatever is in our heart, let's lay it open to him. And if he puts his finger on something, we're quick to repent and ask for forgiveness. All together, our Elohim and Elohim of our fathers. The kingdom of Elohim is within us. We declare that Yeshua, he is king, and his kingdom shall rule in our lives. Of him it was written, this is Yeshua, the king of the Jews. With love and devotion, we will follow him and keep his commandments. We will love you with all our hearts, soul and strength, and we will love our neighbor as ourselves. And I guess that's important.
to love our God. And that's the vertical form of worship. And then the horizontal one is loving our neighbors as ourselves. Together, we will bring the good news of salvation to all who will receive it. For you are coming again with judgment. And in that day, all the earth shall know that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the ruler among the nations. Thus says the Lord, the King and Redeemer of Yisrael, I am the first and I am the last. There is no God but me. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord triumphant in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift up your, and lift up, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of the armies. He is the King of glory. Together, King of the universe, let your kingdom be established in us. We acknowledge your rulership, not only with our lips, but also with our lives. May we bend our will to conform to yours. And may our hearts find delight in serving you. May our every act proclaim the Lord of Israel. Yeah. And his kingdom rules over all. Sorry. Together, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and mighty in goodness and truth, keeping mercy unto the thousandth generation, Forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. This is the blessing for our Messiah. The pardon for our sins has been provided for us by the atoning work of the shed blood of Messiah. Yeshua. Barukatai Yodhevave Elohenu Melech Haolam Asher Natanyanu Haderech Leshua the Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Together, blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us the way to salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. The pardon for our sins has been provided for us by the atoning work of the shed blood of our Messiah, the high, our high priest. And here's the reality. Our high priest has gone beyond the veil. And once, he had to only do it one time, taken his blood and made an atonement that we would find peace with the holy God of Israel, that we would be pardoned of our sins that we would have it right to the tree of life, and that our names would be written in the Lamb's book of life. You want to sing this? This is the Shema. Let's sing it. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Sing that again. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kebo Malchuto Leolam Va Again, Baruch Baruch Shem Kebo Mahuto Leolam Va. Now you got to shout this part. Hear, O Israel, Adonai, our Elohim. <coughs> Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you shall love Yodhevafe, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul. And with all your might, and let these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. 
and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you get up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Selah. Now, normally I would play Micha Mocha, but I'm not going to do it today. This is part of the Amidah together. Blessed are you, Yod Heh Vav Heh, our Elohim, and Elohim of our fathers, Elohim of Abraham. Elohim of Yitzhak, Elohim of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome Elohim, the most high Elohim, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the devotion of your fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children, for his name's sake, with love. I know we're probably not used to responsive reading, uh, but it's an important aspect to just directing our hearts and our minds and our, our spirits in a time of repentance and prayer. This is the might of God together. You, O oh Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace. Resurrect the dead with abundant mercy. Uphold the fallen. Heal the sick. Set free those who are in bondage. And keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of mighty deeds? And who can compare to you a king who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Kadusha, the sanctification prayer. We will sanctify your name in this world, even as it is sanctified in the heavens above. As it is written by your prophet, and they call to each other, saying, together, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Those facing them say, blessed. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his fighting place. From his holy, you will appear to our God. And reign over us, for we wait for you. When will you reign in Zion? Together, soon, even in our days, may you dwell there forever and ever. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city. From generation to generation and from all eternity, may our eyes see your kingdom as it is expressed in the songs of your might. By the hand of David, your righteous anointed. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Hmm. You know, when I've done this um, in certain messianic synagogues, this, what we're doing in a very short period of time, takes almost the whole day. At least it felt like it. I told the story that um, my first time doing this, I was fasting, and uh, we had gone through at least two or three hours of, of repentance, and we took a break. I thought, it, I thought it was over. I thought that, okay, I can go eat now. And I walked out of the synagogue, and I walked just half a block down the road, and there was a... There was a, 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 a a supermarket, and they had rotisserie chicken. <laughs> and I bought some rotisserie chicken, 
and I was fumigating. I was smelling like rotisserie chicken, and I came back to the synagogue just to find out that that was just the first half of the prayer. And people were looking at me. They knew I had sinned. <laughs> they knew I had broken. So I didn't know. So there is forgiveness even in ignorance. Uh, Kadoshata. You are holy and awesome in your name, and there is no God beside you. As it is written, the Lord of hosts is exalted through justice, and the holy God is sanctified through righteousness. Blessed are you, O Lord, the holy king. I was going to play a song here, but I'm not going to do that either. For the sin, together. For the sin we have committed against you, willingly or under compulsion, and for the sin we have committed against you by hardening our hearts, for the sin we have committed against you by acting without thinking, and for the sin we have committed against you by speaking perversely, thoughtlessly, or hurtfully. I'm sorry. What I, what I meant to tell you is that um, at this point you'll be standing. You should be standing. And after each proclamation, you, you pound your chest, your right hand upon your left chest, just as an indicator that you are sorry. Let's try this again. For the sin we have committed against you, willingly or under compulsion, for the sin we have committed against you by hardening our hearts, for the sin we have committed against you by acting without thinking, and for the sin we have committed against you by speaking perversely, thoughtlessly, or hurtfully. For the sin we have committed against you, for the sin we have committed against you secretly and openly. For the sin we have committed against you knowingly and deceitfully, and for the sin we have committed against you by offensive speech. For the sin we have committed against you by wrongdoing our brother. For the sin we have committed against you by sinful meditation of a heart, for the sin we have committed against you by lewd association, for the sin we have committed against you by insincere confession, for the sin we have committed against you by spurning parents and authorities, and for the sin we have committed against you in presumption or in error, for the sin we have committed against you by violence, and by the sin we have committed against you by profaning your name, for the sin we have committed against you, and by unclean speech, and for the sin we have committed against you by foolish talk, for the sin we have committed against you through the evil inclination, and for the sin we have committed against you knowingly and unknowingly. For all these sins, O oh God of forgiveness, forgive us and pardon us in the name of our precious Son, Yeshua. For the sin we have committed against you by denying and lying. For the sin we have committed against you by bribery. For the sin we have committed against you by scoffing. And for the sin we have committed against you by slander. For the sin we have committed against you in our business dealing and workplaces. So again, I don't want to just rush through this. There's a lot of things being covered here that you might not have thought about, that you might need to ponder before you commit to confessing this? This is just a time, again, we're getting right with our God, preparing for the next year. Together, and for the sin we have committed against you in eating and drinking, for the sin we have committed against you by demanding usurious interests, and for the sin we have committed against you by arrogance and pride, yeah. For the sin we have committed against you by speaking gossip. And for the sin we have committed against you by wanton glances. For the sin we have committed against you with haughty eyes. And for the sin we have committed against you by insolence. For the sin we have committed against you by neglecting the fruit of the Spirit. And for the sin we have committed against you by ignoring the promptings. Oh boy, how many times have we done that? we got to do a better job. When the Holy Spirit gives you an utterance, 
we need to obey. Lord, forgive us for that. Together, for the sin we have committed against you by ignoring the faithfulness of small things, for the sin we have committed against you by not applying all diligence in our daily lives, by not supplying faith in our walk, by not supplying moral excellence in our faith, by not supplying knowledge in our moral excellence, by not supplying self-control in our knowledge, by not supplying perseverance in our self-control, by not supplying godliness in our perseverance, by not supplying brotherly kindness in our godliness, and by not supplying love in our brotherly kindness. I'll let you take a longer look at that. Together, for all these things, O oh God of forgiveness, forgive us and pardon us in the name of your precious Son, Yeshua. Together, for the sin we have committed against you by rejecting responsibility, for the sin we have committed against you by contentiousness, for the sin we have committed against you by ensnaring our neighbor, and for the sin we have committed against you by envy, for the sin we have committed against you by unseeming liberty, and for the sin we have committed against you by being stiff-necked, for the sin we have committed against you by running to do evil, and for the sin we have committed against you by tail-bearing. Oh, that's a good one. For the sin we have committed against you in vain oaths, for the sin we have committed against you by hatred without a cause, for the sin we have committed against you by preach of trust, and for the sin we have committed against you with confusion of mind. For the sin we have committed against you by speaking with tongues of men and of angels, but not having love. And for the sin we have committed against you by using your gifts without love. For the sin we have committed against you by falling, failing to be patient, kind, bearing of all things, believing all things, hoping all things, and enduring all things. And for the sin we have committed against you by forgetting to not be jealous, to not brag, to not be arrogant, to not act unbecomingly, to not seek my own, to not be provoked, to not take count of wrong, suffered, to not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rather to rejoice in the truth. For all these sins, O oh God of forgiveness, forgive us and pardon us in the name of Yeshua. Son, Yeshua. Oh, you may be seated. Selah. There's a story about in the in the first book. They're like bookends. In the first story in Genesis. Adam and Eve sinned, and the Lord, he covered them. He covered their sin by taking animal skins and covering them. And to prevent them from eating from the tree of life, he expelled them from the garden. But in the last book, the book ends, the Lord will say to his faithful servants, Enter into my rest. Yeah, my good and faithful servant. And he's going to give us access, the right to eat of the tree of life. The first Adam brought death. The second Adam brings everlasting life. He will give us the right to eat from the tree of life. Lord, we thank you so much. We are not deserving, Lord, and yet you have seen it fit for us to be called children of light. We, we praise you, Lord. We honor you. Ashamnu, we have sinned. 
We have trespassed. We can say this together. We have trespassed. We have dealt deceitfully. We have stolen. We have slandered. We have acted perversely. We have done wrong. We have acted presumptuously. And we have been violent. We have spoken lies. We have counseled evil. We have spoken falsely. And we have blasphemed. We have scoffed. And we have rebelled. We have provoked. We have oppressed. We have been stiff-necked. We have corrupted. We have been astray. We have been led others astray. But if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I hope you believe those words. We have done all these things. But that last line says, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to give us just some time now to do some work with God. Just quietly in your own spot. You can get on your knees if you want to. But it's just time to do business with God. And uh, if you want to come to the altar, you can do that. We'll call this the altar. Whatever you need to help you um, touch the hem of his garment, whatever it takes. Together, our Father, our King, there is no Elohim but you, no judge but you. Have mercy on me for my failings and offenses against those who are not present here. Father, bring to mind specific people and the specific offenses they feel and allow me the privilege of asking you for forgiveness. So let's just do that now. Just allow the Holy Spirit to bring to mind people and offenses that you might have even forgotten. He'll bring to your attention. He'll put his finger on it.
Scripture says, when my life was ebbing away, I called Hashem to mind and my prayer came before him into your holy temple. We have confidence that when we pray that our prayers are being heard by the Almighty. It says in Daniel that when Daniel set his heart to pray, and as soon as he set his heart to pray, the Lord heard his prayer and sent an angel in response. But it took some time, almost three weeks before that angel was able to reach him with an answer. But the Lord heard and responded, and we have that full confidence that he'll do the same for us. Abino Malkenu, our father, our king, together. Our father, our king, we pray for your grace for Israel, your people, and that you would grant unto us forgiveness for our sins, pardon for our transgressions. Our deeds cannot save us, and we are not righteous except by the blood of the Lamb. Our Father, our King, we pray for your grace, for Israel, your people, that they should come to know you. Our hearts are turned towards you in love and reverence. We pray Israel will see he who has died for her sin. And we do. We pray that the Lord will remove the veil from their eyes and that our brothers and sisters would see the truth. You are the truth. The sum of your word is truth, Lord. Our Father, our King, there is no God but you. Have mercy on Yisrael. Deliver her from her distress and bring her faith in Messiah Yeshua. Our Father, our King, sound the shofar for the deliverance of your people. And let every knee bow and every tongue confess that Yeshua is Lord. Our Father, Abino Malkenu, our Father, our King, bring peace to the earth through the Shah Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Shahar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Messiah Yeshua, our Father, our King, sound the shofar for the resurrection from the dead and the heralding of Yeshua's return. And we, we have already celebrated and observed Yom Teruah, and I'm always reminded that these are feasts that have not been fulfilled yet, but Yom Teruah, <coughs> It says that the Lord will descend with the shout of the archangel and the sound of the shofar, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Though this is referring to that very event. Then you have the days of awe. Then you have the days of atonement where the Lord is separating the sheep from the goats. Then there's this party that the Lord has has set aside reserve for this end time called Sukkot, where he's gathering all of his people into his barn. What a time. What a time of rejoicing. It's the in gathering. So the first four feasts in the spring have been filled, full of meaning by the Lord in his first coming. And the second part of those feasts, the last three, the fall feast will be fulfilled when the Lord comes back again. They'll be filled full of meaning. Our Father, our King, let your spirit be poured out for true revival. And let the harvest be gathered with the remnant of Israel coming to salvation. Our Father, our King, be merciful and answer us. Though we have no worthy deeds, treat us charitably with loving kindness for you have saved us. Our Father, our King, let, a, let your judgments fall on the unrepentant and deliver us from the schemes of our enemies. Our Father, our King, send us not away empty-handed from your presence. Selah.
this is the, the salutation, the, the greeting that is used during this time. May your name be inscribed and sealed in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. And that's our hope and that's our prayer. We're praying that as the Lord opens that book that he sees our name. This is a prayer for the appointed season, Moed prayer. Together, our God and God of our fathers, you have given us this day as a time to examine and judge ourselves and to look forward to Messiah's return. We remember Yeshua, our great high priest, who brought his own precious blood, the blood of atonement, into your most holy place. Through his blood, which cleanses us from sin, we now have our consciences purified from guilt and condemnation and can go forward, letting go of the hindrance of all that guilt to serve you in love with pure devotion. You will, at your appointed time, of which no man knows the day or the hour, bring this age to a close with a shofar call heralding a new age. Then nations shall learn war no more. Hallelujah. Now lie down together in peace, and your name shall be one over all the earth. In that day Israel shall be delivered and dwell in peace, and all the nations shall come to your light. The new Jerusalem and the new temple will be established with priests and Levites from among the pe all peoples. And from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, and at the appointed season of Sukkot, all flesh shall come to worship before you. We dedicate ourselves to you today for your purposes as living sacrifices. We ask you to consecrate us to you, showing us day by day to seek your will. Wherever you want us to go, we will go. Whatever you want us to do, we will do. And whatever you want us to say, we will say. If there is anything you want us to change, show us. And we will continually ask for your strength to do it. We seek you and desire your anointing, your manifest presence that breaks every yoke. Let it rest upon us, and we will be victorious in the name of your precious son, Yeshua HaMashiach. At this point, we will stop to allow each of us time to make private confessions and private petitions before the throne, throwing ourselves down on his everlasting mercy. Again, if the Lord showed Nineveh mercy, would he not show his people mercy? Let's pray. Go to a time of prayer.